And so it's recognizing where each part is, and you notice the manipulator's turning and picking up the part correctly, and then it's stacking it. Welcome back my friends, this is MTD CNC and this is my buddy Jeff. As you can see behind us is a beautiful automation cell and you usually hear about automation from me and MTD in the metalworking world, but it needs to be implemented everywhere. And we are at a fascinating, maybe North America's largest woodworking show right now and looking at the new technology, my buddy Jeff is gonna walk us through what's going on, how it's working for all of you guys in the woodworking world, not just the metal world. Jeff, it's good to talk to you again, my friend. Great to see you, Tony. Always a pleasure. So let's get right into this, buddy. When I used to work in the woodworking world, as you already know, I've done my complaining about how heavy all of this wood was, taking a four by eight, dropping it onto a routing machine of some sort. And I look at this and my eyes just go, well, where was that 10 years ago, right? So let's talk about this automation cell and some of the partnerships. What we have behind us is a partnership with Ema Schelling and Barbrick. Um, and we have a storage system. And so the whole idea with the storage system is you put all of your different panels in here and they can be different sizes, different colors, any, any different types. And they don't even have to be a homogeneous stack of all the same, they can all be intermixed. And then what happens is the storage system comes and there it goes right now, picks up a board and put, comes and places it on the machine. And you can have multiple machines in here. So you might have five machines that one storage system is feeding. So the board gets dropped right on the machine and then if you, have, if you want pre-labeling or pre-marking, we can go ahead and mark that board so that we know what all the parts are going to be once they're cut out. So once the storage system's out of the way, it'll send a signal to the router. The router will start labeling. Oh, yeah, good timing here, Tony. And so each label is gonna go on to the part and it's gonna, so at the other end, once they're cut out, you'll know what every single part is. So on this front end, just I, I should mention while we're over here, if you don't want a huge storage system, you just want one pallet, you can do that, right? You can, you can just have a scissor lift and we can pre-label, pre-mark on that um, right here at the beginning. So Jeff, for everyone who's watching right now, just one thing to clarify, because I know you talked about it, but I want to be sure. So if I have a stack of maple, a stack of oak, a stack of MDF, a stack of whatever it might be, you can program this system. And let's just say every single one is a different job as well with a different nesting of all the different parts. You can program and go, I want one sheet of this, one sheet of this, one sheet of this. Ultimately, I have my custom cabinetry, kitchen, whatever it might be. Or even, I know you guys do 41 foot routers where you're doing one piece for you know Winnebago's and such and, and boat parts, right? So for a system like this, where I'm looking at these four by eights that are along this, and this one's actually a little bit bigger, but I'm looking at all these. They can all be different jobs, all be different materials, but you pretty much set it up and then walk away and let it do its thing, right? Right, Tony. So in, the, in your CAD CAM software, you essentially program everything and then you create a job list. And so you're basically just ordering it. Here's what I want it to do for the day. And usually you're doing that the day before. So you're just saying, hey, tomorrow, here's the plan. And then it's just feeding the router boards. You can even put a saw on it. So in this case, um, the, the Ema Schelling saw is over there and, and we're feeding a saw and a router. So two totally different machines. It could be multiple of the same machines and you just feed whichever boards, like you said, different materials, one at a time, as you need them. And coming from the metalworking world, but also the woodworking world, and understanding how automation works in general, is this something that you would recommend or something that could be done where you run through the night? Is this an autonomous, like 24 seven type of operation where it doesn't always have to be watched? Yeah, so you could run it in a lights out scenario um, where it is fully automated end to end. Of course, that'll kind of, as we get more toward the other end of it, it depend on what, where the parts are going, right? So once you got a finished part, it's got to go somewhere. It can go on a pallet, it can go on a conveyor downstream. So let's take a walk over to this other side. Eric, come follow us. I got Eric doing my camera work today. Thank you for doing that, my friend. So we're over here. Now we're cutting out the nested parts that you were just talking about. So each right. of these jobs is different. This is actually sounding like it's making some nice cuts today. And then as we get to this other side, Eric, if you want to come over here a little bit more, which it might be difficult while it's cutting right now, so we'll see it in a second. Um, it's taking all of these parts and putting them in specific locations based on what that part is and based on how the nesting works as the piles start to come up. Is that what happening over here? Yeah, so this board back here, we've got the labels you can kind of see on there. And then the machine came and pulled it on. And so we know exactly what's about to be cut on that, just like what's being cut over here. And so as the parts are finished, then the machine cuts out each of the parts. And then as it's finished, it goes on this outfeed table. 
And so the machine will push it off, automatically sweep the table clean so any remaining sawdust is pulled off the table ready for the next sheet. And then all the parts are on the outfeed table ready to go to what we call the NST picker. So that's uh, gets real fun because then we start pulling parts and going on downstream. Well, we'll take, a, we'll take a walk over there in just a second because I know we can even add to what's being done here talking to you previously, but you brought up something I think is important to reconvey to the audience, which is the sawdust that's on the table. Now, with the sawdust on the table and it being a vac vacuum table, if I don't get that sawdust off, the next part that comes on isn't going to be sucked all the way down and my parts might start sliding. Right. Now I'm going to get messed up parts. So everything from beginning to end of how these parts are going to be loaded on, then machined, then cleaned, then offloaded, and we'll even get into the edge banding side of things in a minute, but all of it's been taken in consideration so you can have that lights out running if we've chosen to do so. That's right, Tony. So now we're cutting all the parts. Let's, let's walk down this way, Jeff. So we're cutting all the parts right here. We're gonna assume that every single job is different. Now we get to this last area here, and I see a bunch of suction cups, looks like an octopus leg or something right there. <laughs> How does this area work? Sure, so once our, our T-Series, that's the router, finishes, it pushes it off onto this conveyor, which will probably happen while we're talking here. And then the suction cups are gonna come over and it's gonna see each of the parts. And so above us, we have a camera and we're using vision and we're recognizing the parts. So we're basically telling the machine that here's what you're, the program of what you're about to get and then the vision corrects for any skew or changes because you're offloading onto the conveyor, right? Parts are gonna move, but that's okay. So you use the vision to correct, we pick up the parts, and in this case, we're putting them on a pallet on the other side here. That's a little hard to see. You kind of have to duck below, maybe we'll throw a little B-roll in and get a close up. Um, if you don't want to just put it on a pallet, sometimes the next step is you want to go on downstream. There's our parts. So you can see a couple of those parts are kicked a little bit. So it'll start picking them up, put them on the pallet. Then what's left is the scrap. You got to do something with the scrap. So then we push it off the other end. And in this case, we just have a box, but that's just pretty much for trade show. So behind us, now we can see that it started picking off parts. And so it's recognizing where each part is. And you notice the manipulator's turning and picking up the part correctly, and then it's stacking it. What's a little hard to see from here that maybe we can edit in with a little B-roll is is carefully placing the stack because you don't want a Jenga stack that's gonna fall over, you want a stack that's not gonna fall over, right? right? So it's carefully palletizing them at the end, you'd wrap them up, and then what will be left at the end is just the scrap. So see, it only picked up with the cups that it needs to use to pick it up, it didn't pick up that second mm -hmm. part. Very important. <laughs> it is, that is very important. And, and so it adjusted for that skew that we were talking about. And something else I noticed, Jeff, is, and to go with the autonomous that we've been talking about the whole time, this is quicker than that because you don't want the whole system to back up. So the machining will be just a little bit slower than this camera system reading everything and then lining everything up. As you mentioned, we don't want the piles to fall over like Jenga that I've seen on some of the other booths over there. But in the, in the meantime, while we talk about this, Jeff, you also mentioned for this demonstration while we're at the show, this is where it ends, more or less. But this isn't where it has to end for a customer. They can keep adding on components based right. on what they need, whether it be edge banding or sanding. How does that all work? Sure. So here, once it's done picking parts, it's just rolling them off into a bin, the scrap into a bin. Real world, you'd probably have a shredder there, right? So you're just going to shred it up, turn it into chips, and, and then recycle it, mm -hmm. right? Um, but then the parts, instead of going into a stack, you oftentimes will take it in the case of a melamine or something, you're going to take it to an edge bander next. In the case of a um, MDF, you might take it to a spray paint or you know whatever the, the next process is. So it'll go on a conveyor, go into that. So um, what we're actually demonstrating over here with Ema Schelling is they've got a, an edge bander over there. And so it'll go into a four-sided edge bander. So it'll feed through, do a return, feed the next side, feed the next side all the way till it's completely done and then palletize it or put it on a conveyor to the next process. So from that aspect, it can be completely lights out, just keep going from process to process. The software handles the coordination of the program. What am I about to, what board do I need? What am I cutting? What am I offloading? What am I edge banding? And it's all handled through the software and the, and the coordination. And earlier you did mention the fact of this process being faster than that process. Well, you know, real world, sometimes you have big parts and sometimes you have small parts so all of it all of it's communicating all the way along so even if one part were to finish before the other part if the router's finished first before the picker 
doesn't matter. We're not going to push anything off. We're not going to have any collisions. It's going to wait its turn and then proceed. Clever. And you mentioned MDF actually and going to the paint booth. We got right. robots painting as well. Right. So this really is from beginning to end. You've really done a fantastic job here loading the pallets, cutting everything up, loading, uh, removing them from after being cut up, then putting them to edge bit. I mean, I could go on and on about how important automation is because I do it all the time as well. Jeff, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and to understand how Andrew is doing it because guys, in case you don't know, this is a US made company, CR Andrew, and this is Jeff Andrew. This is multi-generational at this point and someone we really want to support here in US manufacturing. So if you're in the woodworking world and you haven't already, give these guys a look. One of my favorite testimonials that I heard from a customer in CR Andrew was, I can go right next door for any service and support for any questions that I have. I don't have to go through language barriers. They're right here in my backyard. And that has served them well for years on end at this point. So Jeff, thank you one more time for explaining how all of this works. And I am very excited to see what you guys do from this moving forward.